Hello everyone, it's Fiona Kennedy here with another Stories Aren't Just For Bedtime. So are you ready for a really lovely old-fashioned story by Beatrix Potter today? So why don't you sit down, give the grown-ups 10 minutes peace and listen to the story because it's about a naughty little bunny called Peter Rabbit. Are you ready? I'm going to show you the picture first. There we go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. <gasps> How awful would that be? Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. There he is, squeezing under the gate and eating. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans and then he ate some radishes and then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley because that makes your tummy feel a bit better. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet? <gasps> But Mr. McGregor, Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and shouting, stop, thief. Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he'd forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Do you see his blue jacket? This is exciting. And Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Look where he was hiding. It's a beautiful green watering can too. Which one was he under though? Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn, it, turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. <laughs> Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. Look. And he tried to put his foot on Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor and he was tired of running after Peter, so he went back to work. After a time, Peter began to wander about going lippity lip, lippity lip, not very fast and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she couldn't answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Look. He couldn't reach. So he's stuck. I don't think he should have gone there. 
Then he tried to find his way across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Look, you can see why. Because there's Mr. McGregor. Can you see Peter? Fortunately, Mr. McGregor's not looking at him right now. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his watering cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Benjamin Bunny. But that's another story I'll tell you another day. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed on a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor. He was hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Hurrah, that's what he wanted. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was too tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he'd done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Well, you know where they are, don't they? You know where they are. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. And why do you think that was? His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for their supper, because they were very good. And I think they deserved that. And you can see that there. But Peter wasn't very well. So the moral of this story is do not go into Mr. McGregor's garden and always listen to your mummy. I look forward to reading you another story another day. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Bye.